Uh, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna cause you to fail that. Two time. <laughs> oh no! Uh, so you get to pick. You get to pick my answer to that question. Okay. I was intended. My thought was low would be yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. I had assumed that's what it was. That's why I was making you fail it. Yes. Uh, okay. The cash well, in. <laughs> You then yes. it in. This can't be good. I do accept it. Okay. Uh, make another craft guns, but you have a plus 10. Uh, 31. Last session was a bit of a a uh, bit of a story dump. Uh, and you guys also started working on uh, setting up what you're going to do for your downtime. Uh, and I suppose we should just sort of uh, Hop right into things. Yep, deal with the consequences of our downtime actions. Let's just jump right into it. I'm taking 129 days in a row. (laughs) You beautiful bastards. So, on the 23rd, I'm going to write down party events, travel to Marab in Thuvia. And we have all of our magic items at this point. Yes, I need to add my wand of internal healing. So, you you have the scry ability from the vision, and you can do that the the mirror. You can do that a couple times, uh, and that will give you seen casually. Uh. For teleport. So, how many teleports can you prepare per day? Uh, I have three fifth level spells at this level. Uh, that's not that's not right. Sorry. Uh, because one of them has to be a, a school spell. Two teleportations per per day. So you could take two people there, or no, uh, three people there. Yeah. And then come back, and then the next day you could take the last person there. Yep. Okay, so who do you take on the first day? Uh, I'd say uh, Tone would take a heavy uh, two time and last snow uh, and and a sure sleepy uh, that it's I'll, I'll be right back uh, 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 tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> Simply, okay. um, <laughs> you sure you'll be able, you'll you'll be okay in this big house by yourself? I guess I'll just have to swim up. I'm sure you can. I believe in you. Shouldn't we maybe take the guy that can heal us if we're going there first? <sighs> hmm. Well, I suppose I suppose we could swap someone out. I only uh, made the decision because. Sleepy's he's busy with his work. <laughs> or no, at this point, I finished with my work. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You just finished. Oh, well, now you've given me a quite a difficult uh, equation here. It's only one day. It's not really. I, a I can stay matter. behind. Y'all can be safe out there with him. You sure? Yeah. Well, uh, in that case, Sleepy, looks like you won't have to be here by yourself. Thank God. <laughs> what kind of loser is in? Oh, I mean, <laughs> you know, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. We'll be back soon. Uh, and with that, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll teleport over. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what section of the city do you think 
that uh, Tone would have scried on. Like a temple district, a uh, market district, uh, Mm. there's an artist's district. Uh, Yes, I do believe that that Tone understands the... uh, uh, that you probably shouldn't go teleporting in the public spaces. So because we can use the mirror whenever it is, uh, whenever it's like dawn or dusk, over the course of the weeks, uh, he would spend time looking at the outskirts of the city, trying to uh, p- uh, p- uh, portal themselves, probably within like uh, 10 minutes walk of the city's entrance. 10 minutes walk, got it. Uh, okay, so I need you to roll a D100. Okay. One D100 coming right up. And you want low. Uh, well, is everyone ready to, to for the teleportation? <sighs> yeah. Ready All right. as I can be. All right. This should work if everything's in order. Ah! Oh! oh. Mm. Very low. Uh, you guys, uh, well, uh, Sammy, uh, you two time sort of is like watching these people as they're like getting ready, and then they, <laughs> in an instant, there's like this sucking sound as the air fills in uh, where they once were, and then. Uh, As you guys sort of see this, like, white light burn itself into your retinas, there is a sound like air itself is snapping. Uh, And then your eardrums pop as you appear uh, in uh, a desert. Uh, And you see yellow a yellow sea expanding out in front of you uh and a walled city off in the distance and then past it is a liquid ocean instead of one of sand i'm going to drag you guys onto a city map i wonder this is in thuvia Yes, this is the city of Marab in Thuvia. Where is... That's when they... Oh, two time probably would have been there. It is n- northern Garund. Yeah. Ha! Well, this is a change of scenery. <sighs> need to make sure I'm going to spell Yes. Your entire, your entire journey has been spent... On the ocean or in jungles. Now you find yourself in a desert. <laughs> you were on a lot of water and now you're on no water. <laughs> oh, but there's water in the distance. We're not too far away from home. <laughs> I'm like you speaking in character, so you must be like responding to the bird. <laughs> hey, you were on like a ton of water and now there's no water! <laughs> and you're like. Uh, no yeah. water. No water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what would you guys like to do? Uh, we're looking for the largest gathering of uh, Farazban worshippers. I'm sure it will take no time at all to uh, source them. They are they are the majority religion in this region. Let's just hope that they, let's just hope that the that we can get through the checkpoints uh, simple enough. Well, uh, you guys uh, approach uh, the entrance way in this direction. Uh, you eventually find yourself on a more solid bit of land, uh, and you notice that like there's like a little shanty town along each of the roads running into the city. Uh, As you approach a wide uh, 
sandstone gate. Uh, you see a man uh, wearing uh, long robes uh, and a turban uh, with some sun pocked skin. Uh, like his face has been uh, burnt and healed many times. Uh, sort of is resting up against uh, the wall with a scimitar at his side. In fact, all of the people here uh, guarding this gate uh, have scimitars. Uh, and as you approach, uh, you are in a line of uh, many other people entering the city. Uh, but most of the other people don't have obvious armaments on them, so they aren't stopped. But you are! Uh, one of the uh, scimitared people is going to step in your way and he's going to say, uh, Hold yourselves where you stand! Why do you come to the city of Marab? We seek the temples of Phrasma. We wish to consort with their their priests and learn more of their ways. You seek the temples of Phrasma. Yes. Well, you have come to the right place. Our district of the redeeming sun has the most temples of any city in the room. Our faith to Serenrain, Parasma, and Nethys are unparalleled. Well, I can't wait to behold the sight. Is there anything you need for us to do before we can enter the city? I am... If you don't mind me asking, are you aware of the situation going on at the temple currently? Uh, in are you seeking them out to help? Are you called adventurers? Yes, we are... Well, no. We are adventurers, but we have not been called by them. We are merely seeking them out for a form of theological research. Theological research. I'll make a diplomacy check. I will do just that. 36. Uh, he's gonna say, uh, Well, um... I am certain the Temple of Phrasma would be very interested in any sort of... debates you have to bring. I would suggest you keep any debates away from the Temple of the Redeeming Sun. Uh, and he uh, pats a uh, symbol uh, around his throat. Uh, and you see it is the angelic onk of uh, Saren Ray. Uh, Tone will grimace and say, well, I'll take that into consideration. The God of the Sun does not appreciate those shadowing her doctrine with strange logic. Uh, and uh, he is going to uh, gesture for you to pass. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll uh, turn to everybody else and give him a wink. Let's get going. What a wink? Um, but yeah, so, uh, oh, we can, can we find the district simple, uh, easily, or we'll, should we make, like, um, gather information checks? Uh, you could make, uh, knowledge locals, or you could gather information, but gathering information is going to take 1d4 hours. I think I'll make the knowledge local check, then. Uh, Tone's been scouting this place out with his scrying, so hopefully and that will help. Rem- remember, you can always take 10. That's right. <laughs> I can always take ten as long as I am not uh, assailed. Yes. So I'll my with that will be a twenty five. Hopefully that'd be enough for this place. Okay. Uh, 
25. 25, 25. Let's see. Uh, you are aware that the Temple of Phrasma uh, within Merab is also its uh, graveyard, as many temples of Phrasma are. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, and you are also aware that it is here. Ah, well, that's simple enough. Am I there with them, or I'm still back on, uh... Yes. Okay. And actually, I had a question for you. Uh, do you have any time after you've earned your capital while uh, Sleepy is crafting? Uh, yeah, I would have a couple days yeah. if I'm taking from the... Uh... Can I get a uh, craft guns check from you? No. <laughs> ah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, please that's just say probably good. That's happens. good. Yeah, that's exactly. What I, that, <laughs> that one the last time uh, I was crafting a gun and look what I made. Yeah, but that was a wisdom check. <laughs> no, it was a craft guns check last time. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> once again. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, and you are working. Are you keeping what you're working on secret? Uh, I would not talk about it, but I would not hide it if asked about it. Okay. Okay. Well, you folks would have seen two time working on something. Uh, <laughs> As much as I can really tell you, but I'm just giving it away, but yeah. Good thing I don't give it. Uh, just, just kidding. Yeah, so w when you're starting to do the uh, outline and sort of uh, making your first steps, uh, there is a whisper that is essentially offering you a uh, bargain. Uh, you are going to be lent some power in order to essentially re-roll this. Uh, okay. But if you take this, uh, you are swearing yourself to hand it over if you ever meet uh, the one it's intended for. Just trying to keep this as very like <laughs> unclear to the rest of the group. I'm kind of speaking in riddles, but I think you understand okay. what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, so, in exchange, I, okay. Uh... Can I have like a minute to think about it? Sure, we'll get it. <laughs> we're gonna keep going. Yeah, uh, it's you. Are you uh, heading on to uh, the temple? Uh, no, I think uh, I think because because we wanted we wanted uh, get two time in on this. Tom would look for a place for everybody to stay for the night. Basically, say we have what we have a day of vacation while I go and get ready to bring uh, two time over here. Okay. Uh, what kind of place are you looking for? I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm willing to spend a little bit of gold. What about everybody else? I mean, we are here on official business, but it doesn't mean we can't see the city for what it's worth. I have uh, freshly well, earned money uh, from your. From your previous uh, local, if you're looking for some place that's nicer and sort of like uh, potentially a little bit more expensive, uh, the flowering, uh, the flowing market uh, is the place to go. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Uh, what does everyone else think? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna cause you to fail that. You're done. <laughs> oh no! Uh, so you get to pick. You get to pick my answer to that question. Okay. I was intended. My thought was low would be yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. I had assumed that's what it was. That's why I was making you fail it. Yes. Uh, then cash well, it in. <laughs> you then cashed yes. it in. This can't be good. I do accept it. Okay. Uh, make another craft guns, but you have a plus 10. Uh, 31. Okay. Got it. Uh, okay. Uh, so you guys are heading to the flowing market? I yeah. am so glad my will save thing ended up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm so glad me deciding to make will saves for like the way I'm going to take two times story ended up intertwining with that. Oh, that's so fucking cool. So. Uh, I'm worried. You guys head into the flowing market. Uh, and now if you're looking around for a place, it's only going to be a D4 times uh, one minute because you're in a more contained area to like gather info on like the best place to stay. Uh, so it'll take you three minutes. To, uh, make a diplomacy check. And we got We still got to roll, right? Yeah. Well, I, or you can take ten. Diplomacy. You had not threaten. I'll take ten to help. Okay. I thought you couldn't so take ten on help actions. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get the thirty-five. There you go, thirty-five. Uh, you are going to, yeah. There is a, uh, they they have like basically two different uh, directions that they point you in. Um, there is a uh, dockside in uh, the largest inn in the city. Uh, that contains a gambling house and a fully stocked restaurant. Uh, and this Ooh. is a little bit... This is like the one that rich adventurers go to. And then there's a more like hoity-toity like where like rich people who were like born rich go. Uh, and that one is smaller and a little bit more quiet. Uh, but apparently has like the best amenities like their spa treatment is insane. <laughs> I know what uh, I well, would vote for. <laughs> which one would you vote for, Slipper? The hoity toy. Is it the one that would is it the one that would get us kicked out of the city if you robbed everyone blind? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. How about this, Slipper? If you really think about it, if you wish to do that thing that we both know that you're not going to do, then you could logically assume and you could do that even if you weren't staying at that hotel, right? Yeah, but, you know, think about the convenience. <laughs> uh, well, I, I I like not to, to dwell on, the, on your inner machinations, my good friend. Neither do I. Uh, I... <laughs> But uh, yes, so I think Toe would vote for the other place, <laughs> the uh, the adventurers, and because there's a restaurant and uh, and all that. So there's a At this point, it might be better there. for it, it. might be better to convince Sleepy to go gambling instead of robbing people. <laughs> I wanted a spa treatment. <laughs> okay, that's. <what> I <laughs> I've been I've been crafted my ass down. I guess that's true. You could. It's not the. I should should give you I fair treatment. I'm Manny Petty. Well, they got Max. they got like they got they got spa they got spa treatments as well. It's just not as like you know expensive. Uh, you guys head over here, uh, and uh, yeah, the the place is called uh, uh, the Moon Orchids Elixir. Uh, Boy, the, I wonder where uh, they got that name from. The land of eternal youth. Uh, and uh, they welcome you in. And they sort of like uh, 
it costs you, I think it costs, yeah, 16 gold pieces for a knight there. Okay. Uh, but that includes like a full, like, platter uh, for your group and like uh, uh, drinks for the table. Okay, yeah, that's that's a fair price in that case. Is that 16 each or 16 all together? 16 each. Oh, okay. Ching! Money on the table. <sighs> it was 16, yeah. you said? Yep. Yep. Heck yeah. Uh, and uh, they treat you uh, exceedingly well. Uh, is there anything specific that you guys get into while you're there? Uh, I definitely go to the spa. I need, I need to decompress after holding up in a room and just ding, 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 making magic. Uh, they uh, shampoo you and wash you down. Uh, <laughs> Scratch your uh, paws. What are what are monkey hands called? Just hands, I guess. Monkey paw. Uh, yeah, it's a paw. Yeah, there you go. Uh, scratch your uh, hands with like uh, to like rub off the uh, calluses, uh, and then they condition your fur, and someone gives oh. you a massage. Uh, and uh, you come out with like this, like poofed out hair. Uh, as they <laughs> blew you out with hot air. Uh, oh wait, you could, another, a cool thing about my robes, I can make them look like whatever I want. So I just also gonna have like a big voluminous like <laughs> bathrobe. <laughs> also, wait, 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 wait. Where's that me. picture? I have that picture on my desktop somewhere. <laughs> oh, I think the monkey in the bathrobe. <laughs> Yeah, I look, I look just like that. Much. Just like, ah. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, mask. I'm gonna take the rest day today. Mask ah. will say, "It's okay. I feel a time coming when more thievery will be needed." To to be fair, I did do like a week or two straight of just burglary. <laughs> Uh, a while ago. <laughs> I do want to steal from the city. Not nothing. Maybe we don't let them hear got... you say that. I'm talking to mask in my head. This is this is for. I'm not saying this out loud. I'm talking to the voices inside my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I'm crazy or something? I'm not an idiot. Uh. Okay. Uh, how about Tone? Is Tone doing anything special? Uh, I, for, for today, I think, uh, if, if we're just gonna write this off as vacation day, uh, I think Tone would want to find if there's any museums. There are certainly museums. Uh, specifically the Orchard... Uh, Orchid Gateway District uh, has uh, a uh, mixture of uh, strange uh, oddities uh, and uh, from uh, Murab's like uh, wartime like trophies and stuff uh, so a lot of like uh, old like there's a navy museum uh, across the uh, the bay from the uh, navy district uh, right here uh, and then there's also uh, there's definitely some uh some, uh, there's a school that you could potentially visit. Uh, oh, like a university? Yeah, uh, there is a school of arch- 
Artokus Karan. Uh, the uh, genius alchemist. Ah. Potentially the best alchemist to ever live. Definitely the best one alive uh, right now. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think uh, I think Toad would would not go to the university. Uh, he uh, uh, he he'd go to the he go to the war museum. Yeah. Mm, uh, yeah, that would be the go. original like ancient uh, designs of their battleships uh, going forward into the future. You see several exhibits uh, describing uh, the naval tar- tactics of the uh, swashbuckling folk of uh, the Shackles uh, and uh, their occasional skirmishes with pirate kings uh, and their occasional skirmishes with the Chelish Navy and the Tall Dane. Uh... And, uh, yeah, that is what Tone is going to be doing. Heavy, you drinking? Yeah, Heavy's going to be drinking. Okay. Uh, that's not doing anything? Just pub crawl. <clears throat> I would be Joy Reapy in the, uh, spa. Spa. Yeah. Okay. D Fleet. Yeah, <laughs> sprayed down. I mean, I imagine it's you know the the sort of best uh, grooming, as it were, you've been able to get since you know before you ended up in slavery. Yeah, I don't know if you if you keep meeting up with that dryad. <laughs> mm-hmm. I still have that room. flower. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so uh, you guys get your rest. Uh, spend some time in spa as you visit a museum. Uh, and then Tone is going to head back. And pick up time. Uh, I'm going to say that your work finishes up to time. Okay. Today, because that feels dramatic. Yeah, 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 dramatically. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, Tone, I need you to roll D100 again. You want one, one, lower is better. And this is, this is very familiar, so there's no chance that you're going to miss up. Tone? Sorry, but this is the teleporter roll. I was uh, I was drinking water. <laughs> okay. um, you teleport uh, to time into the ocean. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you were thinking too much of water, and then... Oh, I'm very. I'm really parched right now. <laughs> uh, you guys, you you pop into existence. Where would you teleport uh, if you were gonna go get uh, two time? Get two time? Uh, yeah, you're I th- teleporting back to Bellis. Are you going to the yeah. castle? Or are you where are you going? Outside the castle. Okay. Uh, and you start walking in. Uh, do you call out for two time or do you just go to the place that he normally is? I would call out to two time. Okay. Uh, two time. Uh, you have been in a state. Uh, the last moment of your work on this device you realize that you had fucked it up like bad like it was not gonna work at all but you felt this moment of like something reaching out to you and you have been working tirelessly for the past day uh clinking away at this machine 
parts of it seem almost arcane to you. Like, the designs surpass your own understanding, but your hands keep moving. You keep making. And possessed by this... almost externalized portion of yourself. This piece of you that came about via an infection and a curse, but is no doubt still a part of you. Uh, You create a steel contraption. This rising pillar of metal. Uh, And you know built into it is a a compressed charge of gunpowder that is fits into this size if you look at my camera yeah it's like this size and it's packed into the section and shoved up into it is a basically like an explosive mortar shell uh, and you've scratched runes into the outside you don't fully understand and you're pretty sure this is a weapon that can kill a god <laughs> you, <laughs> you made <laughs> you made artillery you cannot I believe physically lift it it is it is to be held the way it would be held is you grab onto like these two handles jam it into something and switch a lever on its side and the thing would like blast out but it is sized for a creature that is large it is you know it weighs around 80 pounds that's like more than i weigh (laughs) yeah uh and that's exactly uh, how much i weigh actually (laughs) It, it, you you sort of come out of this stupor and you see this thing and you're like that was not that large previous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was supposed to be for me to use, not a giant. But uh, you come out of it and you hear tone. Uh, well, this isn't something I can really hide. Uh. Get a is it even something you can move? Yeah, I can. It's in my push pole. So, like, I could move it. Uh, it would just carrying it would put me at medium load. Uh, I couldn't, I could lift it over my head, uh, so I could carry it. Uh, do I want to, though, is the only question. I think I will, uh, like I'm, I, I imagine I'm probably like drenched in sh- in sweat and pretty disheveled, right? Yeah, and yeah. you do you do sort of understand intuitively that there is a final step to this. Like, you need it enhanced magically. Your technology will make it very powerful, but it needs to be able to piece pierce like into the epic barriers. Like that creatures of godhood have like. DR epic, which means that you have to pierce it with something that is plus six enhancement bonus or above. How do I do? I do I can I intuit or understand a way to do that? Uh, you need a very powerful spellcaster. Okay. Uh, one that I okay. So I like beyond what tone or sleepy can do, like someone who's like twice their power. Okay. Maybe one day, one day, maybe. So I need somebody really fucking powerful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm just cleaning up. Uh, give me a second, and I'll very quickly kind of like wipe the sweat off and try to make myself look presentable. Uh, and I imagine I'm doing this like in my in like a room that has been like half converted into a workshop at this point uh, yeah. and I and I step out and shut the door behind me 
Uh, tone would say, ah, uh, uh, well, I, I hope the night wasn't too difficult by yourself. Uh, and he'll he'll give a he'll give a smile, but uh, one of um, my, uh, the mild concern behind it uh, upon yeah. seeing your uh, seeing your expression, not okay. not like anything more than that. I think the uh, I mean it's been so busy around here, all of us working, trying to get all of our stuff. Uh, I think the quiet was nice. Uh, Can I get a bluff check and a uh, sense motive. So, uh, who would that be? Who is that for me? <laughs> oh my god. Well, we are, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's, something the more, case. there's something more to his statement. He, yeah, and one thing that you'll be able to see is like he sort of has bags underneath his eyes. Like he didn't get much sleepy. Okay. Uh, I need to think here. Uh, Tone will stop for a second and say, Huh. Well, I just realized I almost forgot this. And he'll, he'll pace away and uh, pack a bunch of scrolls into his, uh, into his uh, adventurer's pack and say, ah, Well, the important thing is now that uh, we're about to go on vacation. Everyone else has got a day ahead of you, so I think it's time for you to uh, uh, rest up and uh, get some get some uh, get some earned time, well deserved time off. Yeah, I could uh, I could use a drink. <laughs> well, I'm sure Heavy will be able to take you up on that just fine. <laughs> How was uh, uh, what what the heck is the name of this city? Yeah. Uh, well, Duvia is the country. Murat. Oh, yeah, Murat. Uh, I was saying that, that was like half out of character. Well, how was, uh, <laughs> how was getting into Murat? Ah, uh, no trouble at all. We'd simply explain that we're adventurers uh, seeking out the temples. They didn't give us any trouble. Uh, everyone's got a chance to settle in. I know Sleepy uh, uh, Sleepy told me that the, the, the spa treatment there is especially nice. Oh. It's like uh, you can... I feel like I need it at this point. It's been a very long time working on these, uh, on all of these uh, equi- this equipment. Yeah, I mean, it's nice equipment, and it was worth it, but that was like four straight months of work. I know. Looks like it really took a lot out of you. Tell him look straight, look you straight in the eyes when he says that. <sighs> yeah. Uh... Are you ready to go? Uh... Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I, uh, and uh, yeah, vacation will be nice. And uh, at that point, Tone will begin methodically tracing out his teleportation, all the while being not not saying too much. He's a little busy, but you also get the impression that he's not. Uh, he's he's giving a little bit of distance. And uh, once he's done, once he's done, he says, "Well, uh, done this three times now, so I'm sure it will be just as smooth as last time." Eh, I mean, worst case, we get a fun story out of it, <laughs> don't we? Always. Uh, Tom will cast uh, his second teleport of the day. So it's a D100. Once again, Damn. incredibly low rolls. You, uh, same sucking as, and then there's a snap, and, uh, your ears pop, and you're in a different place. You're on a desert right outside the city. Or do you teleport right into the city this time? Uh, same deals before. I don't want to risk getting into magical trouble. Uh, well, you guys uh, make your way back towards the city. Uh, I think uh, you're gonna see like uh, some conference between two of the guards 
as you approach, and uh, one of them is going to walk up the line to you before you can even get in. He's going to say, uh, My friend says he recognizes you. Ah, yes. Uh, I was merely getting uh, 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 another one of my compatriots uh, was lagging behind, so I went back to retrieve him, that's all. You are a mage. Uh... Yes, I am a mage. I, I am a I am a practitioner of magic. The teleportation rooms in the university. You should go to them. Oh, There's I did not realize they were enter. not realize they were accessible. Well, thank you for the tip. They are very specifically de- designed, uh, so that they are extremely unique. In order to make it so that you can be extremely familiar with them, just from a drawing. If you want ah. to. I can take you to them. Uh, I'll, so I'll, you use the correct paths. I, I see. Uh, well, I'll be sure to do my research and visit it while I'm here. Thank you. He's going to put a hand on your shoulder and say, uh, perhaps you did not understand. You are going to come with me. Look at them. Jot them down in your journal. Hmm? A spell book? Yes. You know. Yes, I will do this. I will come with you. Good, good, good. You're a smart man. Very smart. And he is going to tug uh, Tone along. Uh, does uh, two down follow? Uh, I mean, I don't know where we're staying here, so... Yes. Yeah, I would. I think I would. Okay. Uh, he is going to uh, pull down through the streets uh, and uh, he's going to uh, knock on uh, the front door uh, after walking down a like open plaza into uh, this school. Uh, and uh, you watch as the door opens uh, and you see a massive gorilla uh, wearing robes standing inside. Uh, and the gorilla is going to speak and it says, uh, You folks have business here? Uh... Toad will, Toad will bow and say, Ah, we are mer- merely visiting the university on the recommendation of the City Watch here to make sure there are no teleportation mishaps in the future. I'm merely unfamiliar with it. Guard will nod and say, uh, What he says is true. You must take him to the teleportation rooms. We cannot have him accidentally teleporting inside of a uh, local and exploding them. Oh, Toad's oh. eyes will like kind of bug out. It's like, oh, I did not realize that that was a possibility. Toad uh, just teleports the guy who makes the sun orchid elixir. <laughs> <laughs> I am admittedly new to this and uh, self taught. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Toad will you, you, you would not probably die if you have the ability to cast this spell in a very high level, but, uh, you know. The commoner that you go inside of probably would. I would not want to, and I would definitely not want to do that. Um, Let's do the safe thing here. I'm coming along. Very sensible. Sensible for an adventurer. Mm, Go in. Uh, And the the gorilla will beckon for you to follow and say, uh, yeah, we can get you what you need. Come with me. Uh, Thank you, sir. I didn't don't think I caught your name. My name is... uh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, 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 have a t- uh, eh, Kojak. It's a pleasure. What was that? Uh, I said, I, uh, 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 no, I, I, out of character, I just, I just said my last name and, uh, would, uh, say it was a pleasure to meet him. And you? Oh. I said, uh, anyone? <laughs> Uh, my name's, uh, Two Time, is what they call me. I'm just, a friend of, a friend of Koyaks here. Uh. Yeah. 
along for the ride. Yeah. Well, follow me. Uh, he's gonna lead you uh, down some hallways uh, into a room uh, that is uh, this like sphere. It's a perfect sphere. Even the door, as you sort of shut it behind you, is curved inward so that it fits with the framing. And uh, uh, throughout it are uh, patterns of orchids uh, on each of the walls. And each of them is in a different direction and orientation. Uh, And uh, he is going to say, uh, you're going to have to spend a few minutes in here. Normally takes people 15. Well, uh, I I will get to work then. You said to, to draw it, right? Trace it, sketch. memorize it, any any way that you normally memorize things. Excellent. A lot of people I'll have to draw it. Some people can just see it once. Depends on who you are. Hmm? Of course. <laughs> uh, Tone will, will sit down in the room and begin uh, sketching it out. Is that a gun? <laughs> oh, is he, he talking to me? Yeah. Can I hold it? Uh. <laughs> uh sure. No, reach down. Gorilla Familiar goes on a killing spree. 15 dead. News at 10. Picks it up. Holds it in his hands. So I like turn it over. Looks down the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> you uh you shouldn't look down the barrel, it's like a safety thing. Oh, don't worry about me. Uh how do you use it? Is it like a oh. crossbow? I see it's got like the thing on it. A, a trigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I'll explain the mechanics of how it works, and then like how mine and how like this differs from like uh, because this is the only revolver in existence that we know. Of. Like this is a yeah. new thing I created. Yeah. So I'll explain how like normal, typical like black powder pistols work and then what this does differently uh, yeah 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 okay you got metal cartridges I heard yep. they had that paper uh, paper it's uh I mean it's nice it's faster than powder but I mean uh, why bother with the paper cartridges when you can use the metal uh, I didn't know it was possible it's very cool. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. I'll have to tell Artogus about this. I would know who that is, right? That's like yeah. the yeah. Okay. All right, well, I'm uh, I'm honored you would tell him about it. He might be interested in speaking with you later. Shit. Okay. Do you uh, put chance to have a uh, permanent place of residence? In. Uh, yeah, me and my friends, we have a castle out in, uh, outside Bellas. It's a small town. I'll describe the location. You got a castle. That's something. Well, I guess um, it is. (laughs) Me and my four roommates got a castle. By Bellas. Can't say that I know what that is, but I'm sure our docus does. He knows a lot of shit. Yeah, I <laughs> I would assume he does, given what he's done. Yeah. He gave me sentience. Yeah, I was wondering. That's pretty cool. He's got to be a uh, pretty powerful guy to do something like that. Yeah. This way I can take joy in ripping people to pieces. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh- before I just did it to survive. Mm. Honestly, 
as morbid as that is, there's there's a lot of beauty in that actually. Planet of the Apes theme plays in the background. <laughs> well, have a good day. You too. Tell your friend to leave once he's done. Otherwise, I'll have to rip him to pieces. <laughs> I will communicate that message very clearly. And uh, he's going to walk off. Uh, and eventually, Tone will uh, finish uh, calculating the circle. Was Tone... Nice. Did, did you hear that convers? Did he hear that conversation? Or was uh, he like... I, I think you guys would have been waiting outside for him. Dude, the... He, he started talking to me. Uh, oh, also, I, I would have told him to finish up, and then once he finished up, I would have said, he he looked at my, my gun, uh, and he wanted to talk to Artokis about it. And that Artokis wow. wanted to know where we lived. <laughs> like, that's he was, I mean, not, that, that's a bit of an extrapolation, but holy fucking shit, right? And you told them? Yeah, I told them. Should I well, should I not have? I I can't say that I know. But the important part is is that someone has recognized your craftsmanship for what it is, which is impeccable. Thank you, Tom. I uh I try. <laughs> well, uh but now is not the time for trying. Now is the time for relaxing. Let's get back to the You want to uh you want to grab a drink, just you and me, real quick, before we get back? I don't see why not. Okay. Uh, uh, we yeah, just, let's, find a, let's just find, like, a local place. Yeah, like a so pretty small fine. local place. I wouldn't even think, like, a bar or something, if they have, like, a like a bakery or something, or, like, a cafe or something like that. Uh, a bakery, you say? Yeah, a bakery, what? I say. I'm so confused. Because the, the gnome has a bakery. So I'm just making fun of it being at the top of his mind. Oh my <laughs> god! I fucking... I couldn't understand what the fuck you were saying. <laughs> it's okay, I'm doing 6D humor over here. Okay. Uh... Uh... Once we're there and like seated, I, uh, I, uh, I shouldn't have lied to you back at the, uh, back at the castle. I, uh, I was working on that contingency plan I was yes. talking about. And I know you don't <laughs> like it, and I don't like it, but. I, I just gotta have every option available. I think that's what we need to do. I should have talked to you guys before I started working on something like that. But I mean, we're all sworn to not go near the other company anyways, so... I don't know. I just felt like I, uh... I had to. Uh, Tone will take a little bit. He'll take a take a quick drink and uh, stare into his cup for a moment, kind of whoosh the liquid around. Uh, and you'll say, Well, I found myself in a similar position just a few months before, and you helped me come to realize the my position and what I should do going forward. And, uh, I owe you that same honor. So, even if I don't approve of what you did, we can still work on this together. I would. Yeah. But, Tomo, like, raise his hand. If we are to undertake this Herculean task, then we should do it with full transparency. I right. understand that these aren't easy things to 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 process at this time. But how I need you 
I need you to help me help you. Do you understand? Okay. Full transparency? Yes, full transparency. I think he spoke to me again. <sighs> Don't we'll take another drink. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> or work... Uh, it wasn't with words. I just... I know what I'm capable of. I'm a good engineer. I'll, like, show the handle of my gun. I couldn't make this. Give me a hundred years and I probably couldn't make something as smart as this. I... I'll show you when you get back to look. I don't I don't even know what the fuck... I, mean, I, I don't even know what the fuck you can compare it to. I... You've been touched by something greater, greater than ourselves. Something hard to even comprehend on a mortal level. Rovagug is an awesome power, but something that risks, and you're more aware of this than I, to tear you asunder if you don't control it. You said that he reached out to you, that he acted through you to make this thing? I... I, I mean, is that an accurate? That's an accurate uh, statement, right? That he kind of worked through me, or that I was touched by him in some way, right? Um, can you repeat what you said? That I, Rovagog kind of influenced me or worked through me to create that. Like it uh, wasn't fully me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you you get the feeling that it's not it's more like he allowed your subconscious mind to act like he broke the barriers between what is conscious and subconscious and the focus that you attained was almost inhuman so it wasn't necessarily that this stuff wasn't there, but it wasn't accessible to you. This energy that you got. I, 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 maybe work through me isn't the correct wording. I, there's this barrier between conscious and subconscious. And that was just shattered. Ever, it, it wasn't, there was no thinking there was no huh i wonder if this works it was doing it was creating it was making it was just pure well well the fact remains that you've made something that sounds like it has potential for great power but also from a source that is truly nefarious. So, when we get back from our little trip, we'll discuss this with everyone. It's a team, because that's what yeah. we are. A team. Uh, Tone will Tone will drink the last of his cup and set it down and say, but I appreciate you coming clean with me on this. Think you've I, uh, uh, earned that day of rest? Uh, I, I need it, whether or not I've earned it. That's fair. Well, I won't hold you from it then. Let's get going. Thanks, Tom. I'm here for you. Don't forget that. I think I get so caught up in making sure you know that that I forget that you're there <laughs> for me too. Well. I, uh, and you're going through a lot now. I can understand why these things don't seem so clear. I feel like I've been going through a lot since the day we met each other again. <laughs> Ever since I done got bit. Uh, a whale crocodile. Even in all my years, I don't think I'd ever seen or heard of anything like that. But, and again, I don't think I've ever... That someone is 
interesting and as crazy as all of you. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's for damn sure. Well, let's get back to them, why don't we? And let's get uh, drunk. I'll <laughs> <laughs> let's get drunk, and uh, Toad will uh, slap you on the shoulder. So, you guys are gonna meet up at the uh, gambling house. Yep. Moon over, kid. That's it. Yep. Uh. What do you guys uh, plan on doing? Uh, what do we celebrate for a day and then do something else? I mean, we need to go to the we, the temple to try to talk to some Phrasmid priests, right? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're going to go to the District of the Redeeming Sun later. Uh, I'd say just okay. for just for tonight, uh, mostly because Tone's been doing a lot. Uh, he will uh, uh, he'll let everybody reconvene and, and do whatever it is they wish they do, uh, wish to do, and we'll, we'll leave tomorrow morning. <sighs> tomorrow morning. That's just a lot of time. Okay. You guys spend the day carousing. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything specific. Okay. I'm going to do cry. (laughs) (laughs) Total definitely definitely get uh, reserved dinner at that uh, at that place though for everybody. Okay. So I feel like. I'm, yeah, I'm drinking. <laughs> what is the penalty for cat burglary in this town? Bad. <laughs> Real Probably. bad? Probably. Uh, or just normal bad? Actually... Give me a second. <laughs> it's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> worth, worth to know if, you know... <laughs> if you have a prehensile tail, does that count as a hand that would get chopped off for stealing? Oh, I lost my prehensile tail. Depends if I like chop hands off or stealing. In a hypothetical yes. scenario where one, not this city, I'm just saying like... You know, to be fair, like the spray I went on, <laughs> the city we live in. I mean, I, I would it's say that... pretty crazy. I would say that it doesn't count unless you have the mischievous tail feet. <laughs> Check out, cut it off. That's that's uh, our once a session. Yes, but actually, only if you have this sweet. Can I use a frying pan as a as a weapon? Yes, but if you have this feet, I actually. I'm having a hard time finding the stats for Marab. Would it be safe to assume it's uh, similar to all other cities dealing from? Well, cities have like law modifiers, Ah. and the law will be reduced, like reduced, will reduce your check. Um, I thought you were going to say that, you know, Sleepy, cities have laws. You can't just steal from people. Well, it depends on what, you know. Depends on it's illegal! Yeah, it depends on what you believe about. I mean, really, the ruling class is stealing from the poor, so... <laughs> That's why the yeah. Tone Kojak Foundation is asking you to <laughs> donate today. <laughs> I am once uh, again asking for your support. Not that we are now the wealthy and the rich and the landowner. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. I was so you... focused on my big ticket items, I didn't look at the little items that I'm so, so I, fond of. I, I was so, I was I so busy looking at that sack. plus two circumstance bonus, I didn't realize I had become a landlord. <laughs> <laughs> God, this really is my worst nightmare. I've become a landlord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, Marab has, time... Ma- has a law of uh, four, so you have a minus four on any uh, sleight of hand or stealth checks that you make. 
La- last one. So with a can- forty, I'm pretty confident. My okay. crime's gonna pass. You say you're earning gold with crime, I assume. Yes. So you're using using stealth to earn gold. Yes. Uh, yeah. So with a forty, if you spend a downtime day, uh, you're gonna get four gold pieces. Nice. If you want to, you can make that four gold pieces worth of like jewelry and stuff. <laughs> like you could have like a four gold piece ring that you install. Uh, that's that's very tempting. However, I imagine I would get caught out immediately. <laughs> so, okay, that looks like my ring that was stolen recently. Oh no, it'd be five gold pieces because you can take ten. Yeah, so. Yo. You can take 10 on. Isn't this like the. Uh... I'm not worried. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's invisible and he has a plus 40. I don't think he's worried about stealing from. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm quite ten. confident in my stuff. Taking 10 is a matter of perspective. If you were just oblivious and don't realize that you're in mortal peril, peril I want to give take- myself. And on average, he's not even close to being in more peril. He's, oh, he's not. <laughs> yeah, and I can roll just smoke up. bomb and run away. Uh, this motherfucker can't off a hill. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'm okay. just taking money. Snatch some shit. Uh, I love crime. Me and Mask love crime. Mask is like, yes, this is this is good. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, buddy. I got yep. some big plans when we get back. This home. is this is why I attached plans. myself to. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyone else doing anything that day? Okay. Uh, wake up the next morning. You guys are heading to the temple, right? Yep. Okay. Uh. You approach uh, a large domed building uh, with steps carved from marble that rise up uh, to a large set of double doors. Uh, Standing uh, at the entrance are uh, figures wearing light gray robes uh, bearing blue accents. Uh, and these robes are like pretty thin. Like they're 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 meant to be like relatively see through because they have to wear dark colors, but they don't want to fucking melt <laughs> in the sun. Uh, and uh, they each carry a set of daggers uh, at their belt, and uh. I will uh, sort of uh, allow uh, parishioners pass, but again, as you guys are carrying gear, they sort of uh, raise up palms and like say, uh, what is your business within the temple? Ah, hello, I am traveling with my compatriots here. We are merely seeking out audience with uh, whomever uh, whomever scholars are or, or uh, theologians are available within within your temple. I've traveled long uh, from across Garund to speak with uh, the most knowledgeable followers of Ferasma. That is all. Well... Perhaps you wish to speak with. Uh, give me a second. Uh, you wish to speak with uh, the uh, leader of our temple. 
Uh, you include the last audience. Kasali. Uh, Kasali has... business that she is dealing with. And then he's sort of like gonna look over you all. And he pauses for a moment. It's like, but perhaps I could get her to speak to you. I think she perhaps might have some use for you. Your types. Oh, oh I see. Whoa, whoa, Excellent. Whoa, whoa. Is that racism? <laughs> no. If anything, it's like it's classism. Classism. Because <laughs> you all have class levels. Exactly. <laughs> Is this gunslingerism? Guns. Problematism. Uh, she is going to lead you uh, into uh, the temple. Uh, and she's going to sort of emerge. There's like this, uh, these like administrative rooms uh, in this like front area. That's like bar that's across the front. Uh, but there is this central hall hall that you walk down, and it emerges into this like wide, uh, domed garden. And you see the dome is like uh, like it's covered in like this uh, colored. Uh, spiral uh, stained glass uh, that uh, is a white spiral surrounded by glass from all of the colors of the rainbow. This like dazzling thing and all this light pours down on a indoor garden. Uh, and uh, she is going to but uh, he's going to uh, continue to beckon you forward and he's like, uh, I take you to visit with uh, Kasali. Uh, she is a uh, leader in our church. Uh, the the leader of our church, church actually. Uh, she is currently meeting with Pathfinders. Uh, and he is going to lead you up uh, into the center of this uh, lush, almost indoor jungle. Uh, and uh, you see three people sitting around a table. And as you see that, I need to take a break so I can take care of my animals. Oh, uh, I think you mean take care Boo. of Dalen's animals. Well, Dalen's animal and my animal. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, is the, that is the technical definition. Uh, dogs have been walked. Uh... You guys uh, approach a three yes, people are approaching a table, uh, and you see uh, sitting uh, around it uh, is a woman with uh, dark skin, uh, though it's sort of like chalky in some places. Uh, and uh, these like piercingly purple eyes uh, and uh, she is sitting at uh, one of the uh, three corners of this uh, triangular table on the center of this uh, indoor jungle uh, at the other one is uh, a woman with a shock of white hair uh, running through uh, long, curly, uh, black. Uh, and she is uh, slowly sipping at a, a tea. Uh, and there is a man uh, who seems to have a lighter skin. Uh, and 
has like this aged uh, world wary look uh, and he is uh, wearing very long and austere red robes uh, and his hair is up in a turban uh, that is covered in gemstones specifically sapphires and he is the person currently talking as you approach he says we believe your situation with the disappearing um, town has something to do with what we're looking for actually we're searching for a object uh, something of great importance um We had an ally. Well, ally is a strong, and you guys step in, and this person turns to look at you and stops talking. And he'll sort of like scan each of you up and down, raises an eyebrow. Kasali, these are your guests. I do not seem to recognize them. And uh, you see the uh, woman with the shock of white through her hair going to say, uh, No, I don't suppose you would. I do not personally recognize them myself. Uh, and the woman with purple eyes is going to uh, smile uh, widely uh, and slap the table and uh, turn to the man with the uh, sapphires hanging off of his uh, uh, turban and say, uh, these are the ones that I was talking to you about. I swear it. I saw them. I knew they would come. It's a little bit indistinct, but I did tell you. Five would come in our need, time of need. Uh, and uh, the man with the sapphires is going to raise an eyebrow and then examine each of you a little bit more carefully. Uh, and the man uh, who brought you in is going to say, uh, I apologize for interrupting your meeting, but... These folks wanted to speak philosophy, and, well, I observed that they might be useful for other things. So I brought them to you, Kasali. And he is going to turn and walk away. I think Toe would wait to see if we are addressed first before, uh, before introducing himself, just for a second. Uh, I think... Uh, if you wait for a second, the uh, person with the uh, purple eyes is going to say, uh, Oh, please introduce yourselves. I don't quite know your names yet. Ah. Just your vague shapes. Uh, Tone will do a deep bow and say, uh, I am Havel Kojak and I come uh, from a the <clears throat> I come from the nameless troop seeking counsel with the leaders of the Frasman Church. And uh, am willing to provide uh, our services in, in general adventuring matters. These are my compatriots, and he will gesture to each of you guys. She is going to snap her fingers, and she's going to say, "Nameless." That that confused me, because when I saw my vision of the future, I saw that you were nameless, and I thought that just meant that I didn't know your names, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite the power you have. It comes with being a dragon. <gasps> a dragon. <laughs> Fucking what? My well. name is Honekepsu. The diamond sage. And she is going to stand 
and uh, do a uh, large uh, sweeping bow. Uh, and uh, you feel like just the slightest bit of like pressure as if she like partially turns on her dragon fear uh, yes, just to dragon. like properly uh, show that she is imposing even in this form okay okay <laughs> dragon <laughs> uh, and this is my companion the sapphire sage Amenophius uh, and the man wearing the sapphire gems on his turban will stand up and uh, nod to each of you and he says uh, the nameless troop I have not heard of you uh, where do you come from uh Sargava mainly I, I Sargava perhaps that witch down there is a little bit smarter than I thought you're new uh, in a in a sense, old and uh, new, we were once mercenaries for the company of the storm's eye when it existed. Well, please tell me your names, Storm's Eye. That is something I am familiar with. I am called Heavy. That is the only name I really care for. Uh, sleepy. A pleasure. Uh, I know you. You He's do. I, I heard you say you know. I know of the Storm's Eye. I know of Abulo. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You are. The one they call sleepiness. Which makes you. Two time? Yep. That'd and be me. He... Um, and you last know and sort of like raises an eyebrow and says, I do not remember a cat folk being among the captains. I, uh, I'll step forward and um, do a. Uh, a bow that's more noble-like than I think she would think, or under... I do a very noble-like bow, that put it easier. Uh, there was a, I am last snow, and I've always turned down the captaincy to be under my own captain before his untimely death. Technically, I should have said officers, that's my yeah. bad. You can say uh, yeah, captains. that's fine. We all got what you meant. Yeah. Uh... He is going to nod and say, uh, thank you. This is nice to meet you all. Uh, and Kasali is going to look over you all and say, uh, so you come searching for philosophy? Uh, we what? come do you wish to know? We come seeking information about the the cosmic truths, the the origins of uh, of your religion and our world. These are esoteric questions, and I understand that you are a very busy person of high status. So, if there's anything that we could do to earn this knowledge or access to your knowledge, then we will do it. First, I should know if I have the knowledge. What do you search for? Tone's going to pause for a second and look at everybody just to get a read, see what people think. Rug. This is your... <laughs> yeah. uh, you lost me at your entrance, man. <laughs> Johanna Kepso is going to look over at Kasali and say, uh, Oh, you are not going to like this. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Tone's, Tone's face will betray a um, flicker of emotion of, Yes, you will not, you're not going to like this. Sorry. Take a deep breath. 
<laughs> raise an eyebrow at like you noticing that because I mean I'm not gonna roll a sense motive, but they they're a cleric. They have a high sense motive. Uh he'll take a deep breath and say we seek information on Yog Sathoth and more specifically the true nature of the relationship between it and your god. Kisali is going to shrug and say, yeah, that was not that bad. I will be honest. Well, that's good. That's good. Have you uh, read the Windstone Testaments? Uh, out of character, I don't think so. Uh, Tone will say, hmm. Uh, I cannot say that I have. I feel like Tone definitely might have read. I believe he knows, like, an outline. Yeah, I've... My sources aren't exactly material. Uh, I... But yes, I, I, I would I would love to hear about it. I can tell you of the three fears of Phrasma. Uh. Uh-huh. The Wind Song Testaments. Uh, you would do this for us and perhaps hear out my deeper questioning? Yes. And there's not I need to do in return? There is not you need to do in return. I will give you a copy of the Winds on Testaments as well. Uh, well, these, uh, uh, can I make a, can I make a knowledge check just to, just to quickly, uh, uh, quickly help Al remember this? Basically, is this, is, is this the kind of information that would be publicly accessible? Like, this is the kind of information that is, that people would know about? No. Not like a lot of people. Some people know about this. I okay. think you know, like, an outline. I don't think I ever actually gave you the full thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's it's not so much that it's closely guarded. It's more just that it's you know that really dense ancient text that only people who are really into Phrasma are interested in. If I may, yes. And uh, she is going to reach into a um, bag at her side and pull out a uh, golden scroll tube. Uh, And uh, she is going to press both of her thumbs into the sides and twist. And you see two locks get revealed. Uh, And she is going to gesture and say, uh, look away, all of you. I'll look away. Uh, Turn around. Is anyone trying to sneak a peek? No. No. Okay. Uh, you hear some movement, uh, and there's a click and another click and a uh, and she says, uh, go ahead, you can turn around now. Uh, Right. And uh, the scroll case is opened and now rolled out of it is a long scroll. She's going to say Reality is born. Reality must die. So somewhere in between must dwell both you and I. Such was said to be writ upon the seal, carved in such a way that all would understand, regardless of language or intellect. The seal was the gravestone of the previous reality. The seal was the foundation stone of the next. 
It was upon the seal that Pharasma was born into this reality. Adrift in the maelstrom with an unformed metacosmos, she stood and read the seal's truth and saw that she trod upon its core. Looking out over the seal's eight edges, Pharasma beheld the eternity of probability, a vastness yet formed from the raw entropy of the churning remains of what had come before. She was the survivor, yet she knew not what she had survived, just that she had. Erasma stepped off the edge of the seal, and as her foot descended to the nothing, the seal expanded so that she was supported. She stood there a moment on one of the seal's eight edges, one step into the new reality, and she could sense that she was already not alone. Something chewed and gnawed out there, beyond perception, something vast and hungry and dangerous. Parasma knew her first fear, that very first step, fear of the unknown, fear that something else had survived, fear that she would not. And so she stepped to the side. As Farazma walked, the edges of the seal grew. The outer sphere bloomed beneath her feet as the seal expanded its power. Where Farazma walked, the planes themselves followed. And with each circuit around the seal, she widened her path, walking a diosal spiral of creation that gave those who would follow a place to love, hate, to war and create. As she walked the spiral, the seal itself grew outward, forming the spire. It reached toward what lay opposite it, its beginning. And when Farazma finished, the spire had grown to support the boneyard above, and it would be her home. The seal had responded to Farazma's spiral path. And as she strode, other divinities were birthed into the new reality. The speakers in the depths retreated at once to the heart of entropy and could not be bothered to take part in what followed. Desna marveled at creation and with a wave of her hand brought the first night to the skies. For at, uh, Saren Ray followed swiftly after and was spitten with Desna and her work. And so she chose the brightest of those stars to shine as, shine as the suns, birthing the first day. Ihis, who would be in one time the first to die, and his brother Asmodeus, who would in time become the first to kill, each defined the other and brought goodness and evil with them. Achekek rose to stand between an arbiter over morality and a judge whose impartial ages in time would crumble to savagery. Yet not all of the first would have names or even be remembered. One tread forth beyond the eclipse, but without death yet in the world, this prince became bound to a throne in the spire's shadow to await his time. And the final would foolishly step forth beyond Pharasma's first fearful step, and in doing so, would be transformed and absorbed by that fear. Uh, do you bear a symbol of Shaylin on you? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. Tone would have the would have a feather. 
the, the multicolored feather. Uh, Kasali will uh, point to that and say, her brother, Dubral, the wolf, who would become Zon Kuthon, father of all trips. Hmm. And that fear became Rovagug. Or perhaps it was Rovagug who was devouring the fear. Not even the gods can remember. As those first eight became, so did Phrasma feel something else wake on the far side of time. Just as she had walked a diosal spiral to create, a widow shin's spiral wound the opposite direction, <coughs> the other side of reality, where the lurker at the threshold formed the second anchor of creation. Erasma thus learning that each cycle required not only a survivor, but also a watcher. So that between the two, between Phrasma and Yog Sothoth, all reality would thus become the great beyond. Thus began the age of creation. And so, in the ages that followed, Phrasma remained upon her throne. She watched and judged all who passed from life into death. And as time wore on the number of dead grew apace to the number of born. And in time, Phrasma beheld her second fear, an event beyond anticipation, fractured fate, and on all worlds, the flow of prophecy was forever altered. Storms raged, empires fell into the earth, gods died, and in the least fortunate corners of reality, entire worlds came to an end. Phrasma herself lost track for that brief moment of what had yet to come. And when she opened her eyes again, she saw that the scene itself had vanished, leaving behind a featureless void. She reached out to the Watcher to inquire if such a ripple in destiny had ever occurred, to determine if the loss of the seal had always been ordained, but the Watcher would not reply. Yet reality went on. Mortals were born and mortals were slain. And Phrasma's second fear abated. And she realized that the lost seal was not an ill omen, but more akin to the passing of a parent or teacher. Now this cycle of reality had matured to the point where it could continue on its own. And Phrasma knew that going forward, reality was well and truly on its own. The apogee of creation had passed, and Phrasma knew that her days ahead would forever be in the shadows of her days behind. And while she knew how much time remained, she knew as well that there was more than enough for mortal life to enjoy more glories and triumphs than they could envision. And even though reality must eventually end, Erasma does not despair. She knows that the number of the dead has never before eclipsed the number born. For even as the Watcher witnesses from outside the cycle 
there must always be a survivor to carry on within the cycle to begin the next. In time, the flux of the born shall cease, and their numbers shall become a static record. And in those final hours, Erasma knows she must prepare the next cycle's seal, and she must watch and wait as the final count of the dead approaches. And when that final visitant from life steps before her throne to be judged, Erasma mm-hmm. knows that it will be the survivor who stands before her, and that she will not judge, but will herself be judged. And so, with her death, shall this cycle end. But it is here that Phrasma's final fear awaits. The fracture of fate and the loss of the seal has made her conviction falter. And she knows no longer for fact that she shall be the penultimate death for if she steps before herself to be judged and leaves behind none to survive, the cycle shall end and nothing shall end. She looks up. Uh, I think tone this whole time has been kind of like entranced just visualizing all of this in his mind and uh, it'll take him a few seconds to even realize it's stopped and he'll kind of uh, shudder and blink for a moment and say yes yes that was it was amazing thank you uh, thank you for for giving that to us that story. <laughs> we have researched this matter for some time now, uh, and uh, Tone will will look at uh, the the Sapphire Sage because he said he met, uh, he said that uh, he knew Abuelo, right? From well, but no, Abuelo. he said Abuelo. his name. Ah, I see. Uh, okay, I was I was just want to make sure I understood what uh, what he was saying. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, tone tone will say yes. We have investigated this matter uh, for a bit. <sighs> we are still. I, I am simply attempting to understand the motivations of Phrasma with the inevitable passing of the cycle and her true relationship with yogg Sothoth. It seems that they, 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 they exist opposite to one another and that she tolerates its existence as a necessary function of this reality. Do I understand this correctly? This is the collective understanding, uh, I guess all I will say. We believe... Uh, at least the Wing Song Testament is the most clear understanding. There was a time when Phrasma understood this universe. But it is my belief that with the death of Aroden and the collapse of Prophecy, this is when the seal was lost. And then with it. Oh. And uh, Amenophius is going to speak up and he's going to say, uh, You folks are probably a little bit familiar, actually, with one of the costs of the collapse of the seal. Yes. I thought 
It wiped you out. I it basically did. We had all left due to disagreements with the captain, but he, a couple others, and us survived. Hmm. The eyes are a strange thing. Uh, and uh, you see uh, the a look passes between him and uh, Tahani Kepso. Kepsu. And he balances himself. Yeah, it's uh, definitely strange. That's all I will say. Uh, are you perhaps unsatisfied with what I have given you? I have another option if you wish for more. Uh, Tone will say, I would never turn down the opportunity for more knowledge. What, what would you have us do? Well, let's make this transactional. I will offer you the opportunity to speak to Phrasma. To commune with her directly. You would say, there's a ritual I can do to accomplish this. To place you in front of her throne in the boneyard for 10 minutes. During that time, you can speak to her. She may be able to clear up any confusions that you have. And in exchange, I offer you a mercenary position in a job that Tahani Kepsu and Amenophius both need some help on. The reason that they are here. And, uh, see, they both turn to look at her. And she'll say, uh, I did tell you I would try to get you some help. I cannot spare my own people, but if all I need to do is teach a ritual to some of these folks, I would be happy to help them, and in exchange, they can help you. Uh, and Amenophius is going to say, uh, that is very kind of you, and I appreciate you going out on this sort of little offering your own work. And she's going to turn to you folks and say, uh, would you be interested in this? Um, uh- I'll look at I'll look to Tone uh, Tone's eyes uh, have a kind of they have this determination with a under, like a pang of of self doubt but this this kind of like this needs to happen uh, and and uh, uh, he'll nod to you yeah uh What's the job? Uh. Uh, Tahoni Kepsu is going to 
reach into her robes and draw forth a small metal box and open it uh, to reveal an onyx gem in the cushioned interior. Well, uh, actually, you might be pretty interested in this. Our situation is quite fascinating, though it certainly presents some difficulties. Each of our orders, Sage Jewels, houses the personality and knowledge of its creator. Though, through field tests and research, Amenophius has made a remarkable discovery. Each of the jewels contains a second and unidentified persona. Uh, some of our pathfinders recovered this jewel. Uh, and she'll point down to the uh, onyx. And its former bearer knew the source of this anomaly. Uh, he can best explain the situation. Uh, and she is going to uh, whistle and snap her fingers. And you watch as the tip of her finger glows with this purple energy. And she flashes it through the air and draws out a rune above the gem. Uh, and then uh, begins to speak in draconic in these like deep guttural tones. And a flash of morning light hits from the sky as if dawn itself was burning down on you. And then it snaps down until it's dim light, as if a shadow had come over this room. This wide open room. Uh, and you watch as the spectral image of a bronze-skinned dwarf manifests above the gem. He wears the simple garb of a warrior monk, but his amulet, uh, bearing uh, the urus over uh, staff and scepter marks. Uh, the urus over staff and scepter marks him as an advisor or guardian to pharaohs. Uh, he is going to speak. He says, uh, Greetings, stewards of knowledge. I am Padrim of Arrakis. I served the pharaohs of old and witnessed with sorrow the decline of a land of wonders. The diamond sage has asked me about a shadow within my sage jewel. I know this shadow is Ariana Tahari, an Usij necromancer that served at the court of the Pharaoh of the Forgotten Plagues with me. Known as the Black Moon, her skill and wisdom were a dark reflection of the virtues of Holy Thoth. She knew more of life and death than any living scholar of the time, and her enemies died horribly of exotic afflictions. She vanished from court for a time to her sanctuary beneath the village of Resa, set on a task the pharaoh personally assigned. I can sense her within the gemstone now, and casting back through memory, I feel her presence upon my every thought. 
perhaps even to my first acceptance into the Order of Jeweled Sages. Uh, Amenophius uh, will worriedly join in. The necromancer spirit stirred recently. It may be that as more sages take up the sage jewels, he grows in strength. The usage are working to speed her awakening. With every passing year, there is a growing chance she could seize control of us. While certain desperate measures and uh, Tahani Kepsu will again give him like a look and he will pause and think for a moment. He's going to say those may not be necessary yet. Uh, I have a plan to assemble the sage jewels in this necromancer's sanctuary. There, in a place tied to her life, we can draw forth these fragments of her mind and safely destroy them with a ritual I have divided. Uh, and Tahoni Kepsu will nod excitedly. We can safely remove this annoyance and perhaps discover more wonders uh, that this Tahari hid away. Wonders that, if you wish, would be available to you. Regardless of her flaws, she seems a remarca remarkable scholar. However, our numbers are too few to safely mount such an ex exhibition expedition. We were hoping that perhaps you would assist us once more, uh, not once more, uh, in preserving our legacy. Uh, Tone has a few questions. The first one that comes to his mind is that would this final process of extracting Tahari from the, uh, from the gemstones, could that be done without damaging the, the occupant, the original occupants? Would Padrim of Acreus like, be destroyed in the process of fighting her? Huh. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, Padrim is going to say, I would not be wiped out. I believe this is the case. And he will, like, look over at uh, Amenophius, and Amenophius will nod. And he's going to say, yeah, this is the case. We have certain... The reason why the ritual must be done in her place of residence in Resa is, uh, well, this. We must have a place to link her to once we remove her. Uh, and then Tone's second question, and then he'll stop being so nosy, is uh, this this village of, of Raysa. I couldn't help but not overhearing you were mentioning a village had gone disappear had disappeared recently. Uh, that wouldn't be the same one, would it? Casali uh, will actually speak up for this. is uh, gonna say, uh, yes, we had, well, about a month ago, we lost response from our from Racer entirely. They seem to almost disappear off of the face of the world. And everyone that we have sent that way has either escaped with tales of on death roaming the desert around or has not returned at all. Well, 
that is most disconcerting. But, but, we, we, so we have lost contact. The, the, the city is, has not magically been shrouded from us. No. Uh, and the final question, uh, do we have enough of these, these, uh, gemstones to perform this ritual now, or would we need to, uh, to procure more of them and bring them to Raysa? Uh, a second. Uh, we only need this one. Uh, Menopheus will respond. Ah, oh, I see. Well, that seems like a job laid out for us. Pretty simple, then. Uh, uh, Toad I mean, is going to definitely not this. simple, <laughs> but elementary. <no. laughs> uh, but yeah, Toad will Toad will uh, start looking over his notes and say, I, I'll, "I'll need some moments to uh, review some things." And uh, I, I need to step out for a second. But if anybody else yeah. wants to talk, because I've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> so I unfortunately don't think I'll be able to quite fight to my fullest against undead. Oh yeah, the ghosts. Ghosts are scary. No, uh, you deal negative energy damage with this. One. Yeah, when, oh, when, yeah. When, when you say ghosts, have you going to do? No, there, there, there won't be any ghosts there, right? That's the, those aren't undead; those are ghosts. <laughs> yeah, Tony Kepsu will say, uh, "Ghosts are a form of undead." You did not know this. <laughs> have you all just like? Like just like for lack of a better term, like visibly like go into like very mild shock. Uh I have a question. You know, I've been yep. seeing some looks back and forth. I see there's something you're not telling us. I get it. Is it important to us for our slash survival and achieving of our goal? Uh, Tony Kepsu is going to look at you and say, uh, it is not important. Would it be helpful then? No. I think they're not telling us for a reason, but... I know. I just want to make sure, like, if there's any advice they can give, you know, with, with like, for example, undead, you know, pack undead killing things. Makes sense to me. Any other helpful tidbits? I would suggest you pack undead killing things. That is a great yeah. idea. That was, that was my plan. Any other helpful tidbits you could have? Uh, anything we might need? We that, that we might not need to know the exact reason why, but it would come up handy. Are any of you arcane spellcasters? I think I am. Yeah, which <laughs> which is an arcane class? Which is our which is our arcane? Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so uh, uh, the two of us. Two of you. Okay. Well, um, you will be useful. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> yeah, we find that's usually the case. To seem to be pretty useful. Yes. Good. Well, uh, when are you ready to go? Uh,. How far away is it? Uh, it is 200 miles. Ooh. And good thing I have a carriage. Yeah, through uh, sand. I mean, you can ride your carriage if you want, or you could ride me. <gasps> Fuck that carriage! 
Uh, are undead uh, weak to any kind of damage? Do I gotta pack special bullets? Yeah, positive energy is usually pretty darn good against them, but... I mean... Positive energy, though, is not... You can't get positive energy bullets, I don't think. Undead... That, that undead was not the thing I said the character. Undead Bane bullets oh. might be useful. Uh... I assume that's pricey. Yeah, sounds awful pricey. Let me see what I can. The so, uh, the only thing yeah. I can do against undead uh, is smash them with gravity or uh, heal them, and I don't think we want to heal them. It would be Man. the price. It would be the price of a plus two weapon divided by fifty. Uh so and eight thousand so. divided by fifty. Yeah. So. Well, no, it'd be 8,300 because there's also. Oh, yes, you're right. Uh, 166 per? Yep. Oh. Uh, that would increase your effective uh, enhancement bonus against them by two. Oh, okay. And also do an extra 2d6 for each bullet. And I'm probably hitting on half otherwise. Well, if there's like no, you're not, you're not necessarily hidden on half or anything. You're just getting uh, doing normal damage. But like pain bullets are effective, super effective, basically. I'm gonna get like five undead uh, bane bullets. Okay. Just to have, just in case. So if you are doing that at least a day, then you'll need. Uh, yeah, give us a day. Uh. So I can scrounge up some bullets, uh, and then I'm good to go. I can't speak for the rest of my uh, team. Yeah, uh, I don't think I have the money to get uh, my armor enchanted to protect me from ghosts. So, uh, walk out uh, to meet up with these folks. Uh, you will see. Uh, a large purple uh, that's the wrong thing <laughs> a uh, large uh, purple dragon that I am putting in handouts uh, in discord uh, sort of waiting out front Ooh. Uh, with a uh, the sapphire oh, sage so cool. that atop it uh and he has uh, sort of over his shoulder a uh, bag that he's gonna toss down to you guys uh he's gonna say uh it's a uh, it is a hand have her sick it is uh five potions of cure serious wounds and five potions of lesser restoration uh, should be helpful. Much appreciated. Thank you. Do we plan seeing any curses? You know, uh, I'll prep and remove more remove curse just in case. Is that the worst idea? Uh, he's gonna shout, jump on, and then you hear the dragon go, yes, uh, jump on. Uh, and you see, like, also, like, people have cleared away from the dragon that has appeared oh, recently. Probably a smart Wait. thing to do when there's suddenly a dragon in the middle of town. Well, uh, you guys climb on the back of the dragon? Yup. Yep. Uh, it is going to pick off and start flying rapidly at a pace of 200 feet uh, per round towards the city. Uh, and we are going to pick up next week.